morning chaps welcome along to the vlog excuse me while I move this grinder so this morning what we're going to be doing is getting ready the uh, events bar for Stuart on the weekend uh, it's absolutely chucking it down today so um, it's probably a good job that yesterday he went out and bought a canopy a pergola kind of thing gazebo is the correct term and uh, we're going to utilize this gazebo uh, to keep him dry there is a little bit of shelter there where he's doing the event uh, but it will it could get blowy I mean it might change the weather might change for the weekend but it could get blowy and windy so we want to make sure that our mobile bar or our events bar fits into this gazebo that we have and also uh, because I don't have anywhere firm to anchor the dispense taps for the keg lines you may have seen briefly on yesterday's vlog I was cleaning up this aluminium keg which I acquired uh, along with almost 120 odd other kegs from a liquidation auction which were selling off the remnants of uh, the Boggart Hole Brewery stock so these uh, aluminium kegs are going to be no use to me in the brewery I don't like to use them and now I've cut into one you'll be able to see in there I don't think you'd want to be putting your beer in there either looking at the state of that so what I've done is turn this into a keg font if you like um, I don't recommend you go out and nick somebody else's kegs or casks there are plenty available online or from keg watch or they can put you in touch with the right people to buy them legitimately and if you really wanted to pay the shipping I would send you an aluminium one at a reasonable price uh, I've been giving all the plastic ones I'm just gonna go off on a tangent here we got about 35 plastic kegs as well from this liquidation auction and they're no good to me either I think they're too dirty to uh, put into circulation so what I've been doing is uh, chopping the tops off and turning them into planters and quite a few of my friends who were a little bit uh, shall we say um, they want to live the good life I've been putting these in the back garden and recycling them as, uh, as potatoes, <laughs> as potato planters, uh, so they can grow potatoes on a patio or on a uh, balcony if they live somewhere that doesn't have a garden. So they've got a new lease of life and they haven't got to landfill, which is good. But the aluminium ones, I could weigh them in, uh, but I think that they, we can find a better use for them than that. Uh, alley prices isn't fantastic at the moment either so uh, what I've done with this one is I've hit it with the flapper disc we've taken off all the paint and most of the dings and dinks and horrible lookingness and then I sat it in the sink and I rubbed it with pure sodium hydroxide which reacts with the steel uh, aluminium and creates hydrogen gas so don't do it in a enclosed space but at the same time it kind of anodizes the aluminium you can see how white this looks now when if we put it in comparison to the lid which came off yesterday you can really see the difference on how scabby and let's get just just zoomed in a little bit you can kind of see how scabby and manky it was before and how clean and white it's not shiny but it's clean and white uh, so it looks a lot better now so as I was saying, the plan is to turn this into a keg font, so I've chopped the bottom off to give me access into the cask itself and then I've decided to make the shive hole the front of the font because once we hammer a shive into there that's going to look, that's going to be the best look inside in terms of what the customer is going to see when they approach the bar. So we'll whack a shive in there when we can. I'll see if I can find a wooden one and then I've drilled three holes in the top here for the taps so we've got these taps these are the elegant stubbies I believe they are and uh, we're just going to take off this back nut now a lot of people use 3 8 beer line uh, the maxi 310 that we're going to cool the beer lines with uses uh, 3 8 beer line connectors but these elegance taps come out with a 5 16 so you do need a 5 16 to 3 8 uh, John Guest adapter 
And then what we're going to do is we're poking through the holy oil like quit and hopefully maybe I'm gonna to have to put that adapter on afterwards yeah looks like it but hopefully we get in here try and do it on shot on, on, in shot it's eight o'clock got an excuse and there we go that is how she's gonna look so we can serve the beer like that I don't have a drip tray but I'm kind of thinking whether I can uh, rejig this lid maybe cut it out and stick it on as a drip tray there it might work it might not you can see another one of the reasons why I don't like these aluminium kegs it looks like the surface of the moon doesn't it and you can see they have like an epoxy resin on the inside so your beer doesn't react with the aluminium but there are places where obviously the resin has given up the ghost and now the aluminium is just disappearing so yeah I don't like them at all so I'm gonna get the rest of the uh, keg taps on here and we'll put it on the event bar see if we can figure out a way to fix it down and then put some shelves into the events bar for the maxi chiller and maybe uh, somewhere to store cups and uh, pint pots and what have you and uh, we'll come back then so the project has evolved a little bit in the past couple of hours uh, we've got the gazebo up so that's what we're looking like at the moment it's a good gazebo it's very easy to erect oh erect uh, so yeah it's one of those where you just push it up and it's got all of the uh, kind of concertina uh, sides so I've got a shelf in there maxi chiller underneath one hand pull and one keg font which I think looks pretty snazzy but we are struggling now to come up with a drip tray solution for the uh, taps so yeah really I'm racking my brain I did originally think the lid cut to just scooch out like this but unfortunately it just doesn't quite have the depth on it and where the keystone is punched through just seems to be a little bit too high if you catch my drift so yeah I'm still trying to think of a solution for this problem brain racking brain racking yeah but it's getting there I suppose while I'm thinking I can probably just start to wire some uh, type of Python up we need to pull a little uh, three um, line Python out of the multi chiller multi chiller maxi chiller uh, over to there we'll use these recirc lines as well to keep that line cool and then the hand pull I'll see if I can get that plugged in as well so it goes via the keg lines and then back through the hand pull and then home that would be a good solution if I could get that to, to work um, if this still has a research jacket in it I'm not sure it does have a, have a cooling jacket this pump so that might be a moot point altogether that well, either way, we'll see what we can fathom out in terms of cooling. Right, we're around here next to the chiller and what have you, because I'm going to try... I'll just put all the fittings down. I'm going to try to create a um, chilling loop, a cooling loop, using this black pipe. Uh, to come directly out of these fittings here on the chiller, the reset fittings, and basically follow along. This is the flow. Follow along with the pipe work that we've got. I should probably tie wrap some of this in while I'm going. Uh, and then what we can do, we can have these keg lines 
cooled by recirculating the coolant out of the uh, maxi chiller and uh, keep the python cold, that's the plan. So I'm just going to go and get some tie wraps um, so I can link all this together and then once I've got everything in position how I want it, I'm going to unhook it both ends, take it away, mark the ends of the lines and wrap it all in insulation and then we'll reinstall it and hopefully uh, that will work flawlessly if the weather's really hot on Saturday we can still serve really cold beer without uh, excessive fobbing. So I've been kind of struggling to come up with an idea for the drip tray. I've looked everywhere in all the scrap bins and everything and I can't figure it out. So instead I've decided to fabricate one out of some stainless um, scrap. So we're just going to make up a little tray that will sit on a couple of supports and uh, just float at the side of the cask cut into the diameter just to catch the drips and somewhere to sit your beer on while you're serving. Nothing special really. Um, hopefully this will work. So I'm just going to tack it all up into position and then we'll have a look and uh, see if I've cracked it or not. I'm probably not going to go to town with uh, welding it. It's, it's going to be coking up on the outside. I'm not going to back purge this I don't think so uh, we'll just play it by ear and uh, yeah let's get it let's get it put together see if see if it works. To be honest, so uh, we've got most of the equipment in place and ready to rock and roll. I've just filled everything up with some line cleaner, tested the pressures for the keg setup, which is down here. I'll bring you around in a second. Uh, so all we need to do now is rinse out the line cleaner from the lines, and uh, then we'll be ready to about go home. I also want to just connect the um, drip tray to this bad boy. So this is what I've made to house the uh, 
the drip tray itself. This is like the holder, if you will. So I just need to get this on here. If I can, without getting paint all over myself, because it ain't actually properly dried yet. Probably not my uh, wisest move. No, nope. I'm not going to be able to do this. Oh, he says. I believe in myself now. There we go. Anyway, that's one inch. So we can pop the other side in as well. Just needs a little squeeze. And then I'll just nip into the workshop and grab an allen key. Oh my god, this is not as easy as I hoped. What am I doing? Right, I bought. I'm gonna go and get an allen key. We'll come back when this bloody thing's on. There we go then, folks. This is what we fabricated, look. So we've got that. We have a drip tray, and uh, down here we have all the paraphernalia for cleaning some keg lines. So what we're going to do is put this keg, Sankey keg connector on, charge her up, and while I'm at it, I'm going to drop this. Is the cask line ready to go on the cask down there? I'm just going to drop that into some clean water and then we can put this up here and start to drain out that line cleaner. Quick reposition of the camera will help. There we go. We don't need to run too much water through here, just about 5 litres will do us. That's good. Then let's move on to the next adapter. There we go. Come on, lad. Just move this for now. Make life a little easier. There we are. See the colour of that? Probably not. I've not got a very good angle here. Should have brought you in a little bit closer, but you can basically get an idea of what I'm doing. So just this cold water now is flushing out all that line cleaner. There we go. So we'll check the big tray. Oh, it's close enough. Oh, straight in. Oh, you couldn't make it up, could you? Right, now we've got that section cleaned up. What I will do is I'll just rejig the camera so you can now see what we're going to do. Turn the gas off for these keg lines. I'm just going to pop this bad boy on here and just pull this line cleaner through the hand pull. It's coming through very nicely as well. I really shouldn't have done this before I varnished the bar top, to be fair, but I think we'll be all right. I don't see any splashes anywhere, so I'm guessing it's uh, not gonna be a problem. I did this at home, you see, when I installed the bar at home. I ended up cleaning the lines in a hurry to get some beer on before I'd varnished the timber and uh, the sodium hydroxide makes the wood go grey so it left loads of little grey blackish stains on the timber so I don't advise you do it until you're ready to do it until you're varnished should I say 
Right, there we go. So we're just pulling water through now. So I'm going to leave this in the line overnight. We'll come back tomorrow. And then upon our return, we will uh, take everything off the bar, disassemble the whole thing, give it a varnish, let it dry for the day, and then the following day, we'll take it apart and put it on the van. So I don't know if I showed you the festoon lighting that we've put up. I can't remember what I vlogged now, but I think it looks pretty smart. Still picked up uh, all the lighting from Screwfix. It's on the 110 transformer down there. So we're low voltage for sight work. Comes with 10 light bulbs over 22 meters. Uh, just about enough for this three by three gazebo to be fair. I think it looks pretty sweet. So once we've got all the corners anchored. Look at that, just lit up. Look how welcoming it looks. You see, once we've got all these corners anchored down and got the whole thing on show, yeah, I think it's gonna look pretty damn good. There's also some, uh, a fridge and a table to go into the back, and then he wants somewhere to put some gin bottles or something. I'm thinking maybe there would be a better idea, but not sure yet. Anyway, I wanna go and check that all the gas is turned off, folks, because, yeah, listen to that. Because I'm about ready to go home. So it's a relatively early one this morning, uh, and I'm still here, at, I think we're approaching half past five now, so it's definitely time to take the dog for a walk. He's not been out all day, bless him. There we go, half past five, according to uh, Jeremy's little hand and big hand. So Chance can hear me, he knows when I'm going because I start turning everything off. The gas is off already, the welder's off now, the lights are off, so that means we'll see you tomorrow.